Hello everyone, this is part two for module nine, exploring financial tools and functions. Um, at the very bottom of page EX587, again, this is a very lengthy review assignment, and so part one covered steps one through eight. I will be picking up with step number nine at the bottom of page EX587. Module 9, Exploring Financial Tools and Functions. We are using the business workbook, so I currently have it open and uh, right where I left off after step number 8. Step number 9, in the Profit and Loss Worksheet, so I want to make sure I go to the right worksheet, Profit and Loss Worksheet, in the range C8 to E8, Project the company's income and expenses for the next five years by interpolating the year two through year four revenue, assuming a growth trend. A growth trend. Okay, so I'm going to highlight B8 to F8. I'm going to go to the home ribbon and go to the fill option. I'm going to go to series. I'm going to use growth and trend and click OK. And that will return the answers that I'm looking for. Again, that was fill series. Make sure the series is in a row because that's of course what it is in row eight. Do a growth and trend. Okay, and that will interpolate the results for years two through four based on what year one was and what year five was. That was step number nine. Turning the page then to page EX588, step number 10. In cell F3, enter 20% as the percent cost of marketing. So in F3, I type in 0.20, 20%. And in cell F4, enter 10%, 0.10. As the percent cost of R&D. In the range B9 down to F10, use these percentages to calculate the year one through year five cost of sales. So let's do that first. So in cell B9, I'm going to do equals B8 times my cost of marketing percentage, which is in F3. Hit enter. Now I'm going to make F3 absolute so that when I co cover, when I copy this formula across, F3 always remains F3 for each one of my calculations. Again, make F3 absolute by putting dollar signs in front of the F and the 3. When I copy that over then, it will continue to use F3 for each of the calculations. Otherwise, it would increase to G3, then H3, then I3, and I would end up getting some uh, error messages. Okay, so that was step 10, and then to continue with step 10, I'm going to calculate the cost of the R&D equals B8 times, this time, F4. Hit enter. Now I'm going to make F4 absolute for the very same reasons that I made F3 absolute in the previous calculation. I copy that across and get my results across. Let's continue with step 10. It says in the range B11 to F11, it then says to calculate the gross profit by subtracting the cost of market and R&D from the annual projected revenue. So I'm going to do equals B8 minus B9 minus, and I'm going to type in B10 since I'm having it covered up a little bit there, 
and there's the result. And this one, I don't have to make anything absolute. I can just copy that formula across, and there is my results, and I'm done with step number 10. Step number 11 in the range C14 to F14, interpolate the year two through year five payroll expenses by assuming the payroll growth of 12% per year. So I'm gonna highlight B14 to F14. I'm gonna go back up to my home ribbon, fill in series again. This time I'm gonna do rows and growth and I'm going to type in one, we got to keep the one there, 1.12. Okay, so I'm in uh, row 14 to do this. So I'm going to go one point, and since it's a growth of 12%, put 1.12. Again, if I just put 0.12, I'm not going to be growing. I've got to grow it so I take what is currently the value, which is the 1, times 0.12, which is 12%. I click OK, and there are my values. I hope that made sense to you. In cell C15 to F17, extrapolate the other expenses by assuming the growth of 5% per year from the initial year 1 rows. So for this one, I'm going to, so this was for what, C15 to F17. So I'm going to highlight C B15 to F15. I'm going to go to the fill series. I'm going to go growth. And this time I'm going to do 1.05. And it fills them in. Repeat the same thing for B16 to F16. Fill series growth 1.05 and then repeat the same thing for B17 to F17 fill series growth 1.05 click OK alright doing great here so far okay let's continue with step number 11 in the range C18 to F18, calculate the total expenses for years 2 through year 5. All I have to do is copy this formula over, and we have step number 11 completed. Okay, moving on. Step number 12. In the range B21, Okay, so we're at B21. We're moving our way down this worksheet. It says, I'm sorry, pause a little bit here. It says calculate the company's initial earnings for each year equal to the gross profit minus total general expenses. So I do equals. My gross profit is B11 minus my total general expenses is B18. I hit enter. And then I can copy this across to year five. And there we go. All right. Let's move on. That was step number 12. Step number 13 then says in the startup plan. So we got to go back to the startup plan worksheet. In the start of plan worksheet, in cell B12. In step B or cell B12, enter 225,000. That's just data entry, 225,000, as the long term tangible assets that will uh, need to be depreciated. Step 14, in the depreciation worksheet, we're just jumping all over the place here. In the depreciation worksheet, in cell B4, B4, it says, reference the long-term assets value from cell B12 in the startup plan worksheet. So I click here, I do equals, go back to my startup plan, and click on B12 and hit enter. 
That's just a reference. Equal, you always have to start with equals, then go to the worksheet that you want and click on the cell. In this case, startup plan B12. Okay. In cell B5, enter 35,000. I just do a data entry here of 35,000. And in B6, enter 15. Again, more data entry. 15 as the useful lifetime of the, uh, of the assets. Okay. In the range B10 to F10, so I'm going to click on B10, calculate the yearly straight line depreciation of the long-term assets using the SLN function. So I'm going to go to FX, all these different functions that we're using. Find that under financial. All these financial functions. SLN and click OK. And a lot of this just makes sense because we look at the parentheses next to our headings. So cost is going to be B4. Salvage is going to be B5. And life is going to be B6. Now, I can either do it here or I can do it in the cell, but I want each one of these to be absolute so that when I copy it across, it will always be using B4, B5, B6. So I'm going to choose to do it here. So I'm going to put dollar signs in front of everything and make everything absolute. Again, because I'm going to be copying this formula across to column F. So make them all absolute so that it doesn't change it to column C, which is nothing. Okay, click OK. And now I can copy that across like so. Okay, great job. All right, let's continue on here. I keep losing my place here. So that was, oh, we're in the depreciation. Before. Okay, so we just did step 15, part of it. In the range B11 to F11, calculate the cumulative depreciation through the first five years in the range B12 to F12. Calculate the depreciated value of the assets at the end of each of the five years. Okay, and that would be in B12 to F12. Okay, so first cumulative depreciation, I'm going to do equals, and I'm going to select B10. That's what we start off with. In C11, I do equals what it currently is in B11 plus what period year two in, 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 uh, does. <laughs> Click Enter. And then I can just copy the formula from C11 all the way across. And it increases, of course, because each year we do 12667. Okay? And then it said in, in B12 to calculate the total depreciated. Let's see. Yeah, let me read that again. In B12, calculate the depreciated value of the assets at the end of the, each of the five years. So this is a formula where I'm going to take equals B4 minus B11. Again, I'm going to make B4 absolute so that when I copy this across, it always remains B4 and subtracts it from the cumulative depreciation according to that year. So I make B4 absolute. You can see why absolute is such a valuable asset to Excel. And that's why we covered it earlier in this course. So I make that absolute so that when I copy it across, each one of my year two cumulative depreciations is subtracted from the B4. Perfect. All right. Oh, this is a long case problem. Okay, so we are just now done with step number 15. Step 16. In the range B16, I'm going to scroll down here. In the range B16 to F16, use the DB function to calculate the yearly declining balance of the assets. So let's do that first. Another new function, FX, financial as my category, and look for DB. Click OK. The cost... Of course, is up in B4, so I'm going to scroll up 
there's my cost. Again, it's in parentheses there. My salvage is B5, of course. My life is B6. And the period, if I scroll back down, is going to be found in B15. Again, all of the ones up at the top, I want to make absolute. So when I copy this across, they remain the same. More absolute values. Very important. Otherwise, it will change to column C, D, E, as I'm covering, I'm copying that across. And, of course, that would not be correct. B15, I'm not going to make absolute because I want it to go to B, or C15, D15 for each of the corresponding years. I click OK. I can now copy that across because of the absolute values. And there we go. Okay. So I am on step number 16. In the range B17 to F17, calculate the cumulative depreciation of the assets. Same thing that we kind of did be above. Equals first, I take year one. Then here, I take equals year one plus year two. And then I can copy that across. Okay. And then finally, to finish up this particular step, we're going to calculate some stuff in B18. So it says in the range B18 to F18, calculate the depreciated value of the assets at the end of each year. That's going to be equals B4, my long-term asset, minus, and you guessed it, B17. Again, I want to make B4 absolute. Anything way up there, B4, B5, B6, needs to be absolute. And I can copy that across now since I made that absolute. Okay, that is step number 16. Step 17. Whew, moving along here. In the profit and loss worksheet. So let's move on to the profit and loss worksheet. In the range B22 to F22, enter formulas to reference the declining balance depreciation values in the range B16 to F16 of the depreciation worksheet. So I do equals, I go to my depreciation worksheet, and I click on B16. All right. And then I can copy that across. Perfect. That one we're just referencing work that we have already completed. Okay. So I'm on probably row B23. Let's see. Let me read here. So again, I'm on step 17. Um, calculate the company's operating profit in B23 to F23 range by subtracting the yearly depreciation from the yearly earning, uh, yearly initial earnings. So this is equals B21 minus B22. I'm in the wrong cell. I'm going to be up here. So equals B21 minus B22. Okay. I'm going to Copy that across. Very good. Very good. Okay, that was step number 17. 18. In the range B25 to F25, enter formulas for the yearly interest expense that references the cumulative interest payments in the range B56 to F56 of the amortization worksheet. So again, I'm just going to go equals. I'm going to go to the amortization schedule. And I'm going to click on B6. So I'm going to scroll up and find B. Is it B6? I'm sorry. Let's see. In the range B25 to F25, enter formulas for the yearly interest expense that re reference the cumulative interest payments in the range B56 to F56 of the amortization schedule. 
Okay, so I want to be on the amortization schedule, and I want to do B, oh, I'm sorry, B56. What am I doing? B56, there it is. Okay, my fault. Hit Enter, and then I'm going to just copy that across. All right. I feel like we're accomplishing something here. Okay, so that was for row 25, so I'm on step 18. In the range B25 to F25, enter formulas for the yearly interest expense. It references the cumulative interest payment in the range, and it tells me right there, B56 to F56 of the amortization schedule worksheet. Enter the interest expenses as positive values by changing the sign of the value. Okay, so this should have been really a positive 20,002. So what I do is right after the equals, I'm going to click right after the equals, I'm going to put a minus sign to reverse the, the sign. So it goes from a negative 20,002 to a positive, and then I have to make sure I copy that across. Okay, I didn't read that soon enough. Okay, people to enter the interest expenses of positive values by changing the sign. Okay, in the range B26 to F26, calculate the company's pre-tax profit by subtracting the interest expense from the operating profit. So equals, there's my operating profit, minus my interest expense, and then I can copy that across. All right. Each step, I feel like I'm getting closer and closer. Okay, so that was... Calculate so that was B26 to F26, so that was step 18. Step 19 in cell F5. So I'm going to scroll up and assume tax rate. I'm going to put 0.33 for 33% as the assumed tax rate in the range B28 to F28. So we're all the way down here. It says Use an if function to calculate the company's tax liability for each of the first five years, assuming the tax rate in cell F5. If the company pre... Okay, here's the test. If the company's pre-tax profit is negative. All right, so I'm going to go to my if statement. That's my test. That's a logical. So I'm going to go to a logical category. And I'm going to go to if... Okay, so I'm looking to see if my pre-tax profit is a negative. So I'm going to do B26 less than zero. So if the company's pre-tax profit is negative, so if that is true, set the tax burden to zero. So I'm going to go zero right here. If it's false... Otherwise, multiply the assume, assume tax rate, which is my 33% up here. So I'm going to click on that, move this out of the way. Click on F5 times, multiply the assume tax rate by the pre-tax profit. So I'll scroll down, and there's my pre-tax profit, and click OK. And I get a zero because that's a negative number. So it's doing what it's doing if it's true. Now I want to make this F5 absolute again so that when I copy it, it does not change. Making these things absolute is absolutely important. So if I click that and drag across now, it continues to use the tax rate in F5. Um, so there we go. Okay. So we threw in an if statement on us too. All right. Um, in the range B29... All right, B29 to F29, calculate the company's after-tax profit by subtracting the taxes owed from the pre-tax pre -tax profit. So in B29, I'm going to do equals B26 minus B28, and then just simply copy that across. Don't need to worry about any absolute references for that one. All right, so that is step number 19. All right. Step number 20 in the startup plan worksheet. So I'll go back to startup plan. 
in cell B30, so I'll scroll down, B30, enter 160,000. Okay, as the amount the company hopes to attract from investors. Step 21, in the investment, go back to the investment now, worksheet. In cell B6, B6, it says to, I'm going to go all the way up to B6, sorry here, let me scroll up. Moving all around here. In B6, enter a reference to cell B30 in the startup plan worksheet as a negative cash flow. So I do equals, and I'm going to go to my startup plan. Moving around all these different worksheets. Startup plan B30. Okay. And hit enter. But then it said, if you read that, it said as a negative cash flow. So again, I've got to reverse the signs by clicking after the equals and putting a minus sign to make that a negative number. Okay? Okay, so then it says in cells B7 and B8, enter values to show that the company repaid investors $35,000. So I'm going to type $35,000 here for five years. So I type five here. In cell B9, use the rate function, yet another function, to calculate the interest of the proposed repayment as scheduled. So I go to FX. I'm looking for a fi financial category, and I'm looking for rate. And click, and click OK. And again, this one's going to be fairly easy because, again, they have helped us with parentheses to let us know that the NPER is going to be B8, that the payment is B7, and that the PV is B6. And of course, the only ones that we have to fill in are the ones that are in bold. So FB and type do not have to be filled in. I click OK, and I get a 3.06. That was step number 21. Looks like we got seven more steps to go. In the investment worksheet, did I just do that? I just did that. So that was step 21. So step 22, in the range B12 to F13, enter the annual payment and dividend schedule using cell references to cell B7 to enter the yearly payments and dividends of 4000 in year 2 and year 3 and 15000 in year 4 and 5. All right, so what does all that mean? That means that for my payment, I'm going to go equals, and I'm clicking on B7, and I need to make that absolute because I'm going to copy that all the way across to year 5. And I don't want it to change, and I don't want to have to do each one individually. That would be ridiculous. All right, so I'm going to use my fill handle to copy that across. And that does that row. And then for dividends, it reads, so, okay, so in the range B12 to F13, enter the annual payment and dividend schedule using sub references to sub B7 to enter the yearly payments and dividends of 4,000. doesn't say anything for year one, so we leave that one blank. 4,000 for year two and year three, and for year four and five, we do 15,000. So it's just data entry for the appropriate years. Okay. In the range B14 to F14, then we're simply going to do a sum of those two values. So I can use my auto sum key. And then I can copy that across using my fill handle. That fill handle sure helps to copy that formula across. Okay, got all that information. So that one was step number 22. Step 23, in the range B18 to C23, we're going to 
Determine the payback period and calculate the net cash flow to the investors. So in B18, I'm just going to do equals B6, which is right there. That's my initial investment, my startup. Okay. Year one then is simply going to be equals B14. Year two is equals B or C14, excuse me, C14 equals for year three D14. Year four equals E14. And for B23, it equals F14. Okay. The net cash flow then is going to be the sum. Okay, of B18 to B18. Okay. This one, of course, is going to be equals C18 plus B19, the cumulative. And then I can copy that down. And each year will get less and less, of course. There we go. Perfect. That was step number 23. Boy, I'm getting tired. <laughs> this is a long review exercise. In cell C25, C25, right there. I'm on step number 24. In cell C25, enter 12%. 0.12 as the desired rate of return for the investors. In cell C26, use the NPV function to calculate the present value of the year 1 through year 5 payments from the range B19 to B23 using the desired rate of return specified in cell C25. All right, so I'm going to go to my NPV function, it's another financial. We've actually used NPV previously. The rate is going to be C25, of course, what we just filled in. And the values, if you recall from the instructions, which were a little hard to understand, it's B19 to B23. Click OK. And I get a value of 152.47. All right, let's continue on. So that was, okay, that's step 24. It says in cell C27, continuing with step 24, calculate the net present value of their uh, investment in the company by adding the startup payment to the present value of the year one through year five payments. Okay, so I click equals. I'm going to do the startup, which is B18 plus, because that's what they told me to do, C26, which we just calculated, and there I get that value. Okay. Step 25, so we are seriously winding down. In cell B28, use the IRR function. How many functions can we possibly do to calculate the interest rate of return of their investment? All right, you can guess it. It's another financial function. These financial functions, my goodness. IRR, the values are going to just simply be B18 to B23. Click OK. And that check, actually, that was pretty darn easy. That was step 25. Three more steps. Step 26. In the profit and loss worksheet, in the range B31 to F, 31. So where are we? We are in the profit and loss. Okay. We are going to 
and her references to the yearly dividend values paid to the stakeholders as specified in the range B13 to F13 of the investment worksheet. So I go equals to the investment worksheet, and I'm looking for B31. No. Let's read this again. Okay, in the range B13. I gotta scroll up and do B13. All right, and then I should be able to copy that across, and we get the values that filled in. Continuing on with this, in the range B, or I'm sorry, yeah, B33 to F33, calculate the company's retained earnings by subtracting the dividends from the after profit. We're going to do equals B29 minus B31, and then we're going to copy that across. Filled in the worksheet. We're now going to page the third page of this instructions, EX589, and luckily there's only two steps. Step 27. An error is somewhere in the workbook, starting with cell F18 in the balance sheet. So I'm going to go to the balance sheet, and we're going to go to F18. We've got a couple of errors here, F18. So what's going on here? F18, trace the REF error in the workbook back to its source and correct it. So I'm going to go to formulas, and we have this all these auditing options. We're going to go to error checking and do trace error. So it traces it back and if I double click on this dashed line it says the problem is with the business worksheet cash okay um, F23 so business that's actually the workbook business workbook cash which means the cash worksheet F23. So I'm going to click on that and click go to take me to that cell. So here I am. I'm on the cash worksheet F23. This is where the problem initially started. Okay. F23. And I look at it and it says E23 plus F22. E23. So it's trying to calculate itself. E23 is this cell. So I'm going to go back here. I got a problem with this cell. C12 minus C20. C12. So I'm continually trying to find the issue here. All right. Let me go back here. I'm going to click here. I'm going to click here. Click OK. And then what actually what I'm going to do is do another error checking, trace error. And it's this cell that's causing me the problem. And as you can see in the formula bar, it says equals ref. So if I take this formula and I copy it across, that fixes the problem and fixes all the error, error messages that I had because they were all based on that one cell. I'm going to save all of this hard work, very hard work, close my workbook, Take a deep breath and say, I'm sorry this was such a long review. Hopefully you'll find this video to be somewhat helpful in a very difficult chapter. So thank you and have a great day.